It's the 6th of February, 2005. On this Super Bowl Sunday, the afternoon has turned cloudy and chilly in Reno, Nevada. Winter weather is making its way toward the gambling mecca, and the 54-year-old pilot of a Cirrus SR-22 doesn't like his odds of getting out the next day. Although the airplane is equipped with a weeping wing ice protection system, it is not certified for flight into known icing conditions. With a big game underway, most of Reno is transfixed, but the 500-hour instrument-rated Cirrus pilot is hedging his bets. He's decided to return home to Oakland, California a day early. Intending to depart within the hour, he calls Reno Flight Service to get a standard weather briefing and file an IFR flight plan. Hello, Reno Flight Service. How may I help you? This is 286 Charlie Delta. I'm a Cirrus 22, and I'm, I want to go IFR from Reno to uh, Oakland. And I'd like to file a flight plan and get a weather break, please. Okay. Uh, the time of departure? It'll be 7 uh, zero one fifteen. So that's that's at five fifteen. Is that what you want? Yes. Okay. And uh, what type of equipment do you have on your aircraft? Uh, I'm a uh, SR twenty two slash Golf. Airspeed? One eight zero. Okay. Right. Altitude? Right. Hmm? Uh, Twelve thousand. Okay. And the route? The pilot and the briefer discuss IFR routing options for the one hour flight. The pilot intends to leave Reno via the Mustang 6 standard instrument departure. From the Mustang Vortac, he will follow Victor 200 to the Cigna intersection, then continue on Victor 392 to the Sacramento Vortac. At that point, he will be clear of the Sierra Nevada mountain range and able to proceed direct to Oakland. The call continues with the flight service briefer describing the weather along the intended route. An upper level low pressure system is dominating with a cold front approaching from the northwest. There are no SIGMETs or AIRMETs for the route of flight. The briefer then provides current weather conditions starting with Reno. Okay, current weather at Reno, wind calm, visibility niner, few clouds at 5,000, niner thousand scattered, ceiling 1, 2,000 broken, temperature 6, Altimeter 2982, checking the weather reporting stations along your roof flight. Let's see here. Uh, over the Sierra, the stations that are coming up are reporting, let's say, clouds from 2,000 feet up to 12,000, and those are ceilings. So you have some lower clouds. You're probably going to be either in clouds or in between layers, part of the route at least. The briefer continues noting that conditions are better along the second half of the intended route west of the Sierra Nevada mountains. She finds no pilot weather reports for the route of flight, but does note precipitation approaching the area from the north. Don't have any pilot weather reports to give you at this time along that route of flight, and I'm looking for precipitation echoes. And let's see what I show here. I'm showing um, some precipitation echoes in ahead of that uh, frontal system level, well, their uh, liquid precip just uh, north of your route at this time, moving towards your route in a south southeasterly direction. The briefer then reviews relevant area forecast with the pilot. Broken clouds are expected over northern Nevada and the California mountains, the first half of the pilot's route, with bases ranging from 12,000 to 15,000 MSL and tops at 18,000 to 20,000 MSL. After giving the pilot winds aloft data, the briefer points out the relatively low freezing level. Now, just for your information, just in case uh, you do get into some precipitation, the freezing level is fairly low. And um, let's see, it's forecast to be according to the winds aloft. Let me look here. Um, in the Reno area, it should be about uh, 6,000 feet according to the winds aloft and then Sacramento about 6,500, San Francisco about 7,000. The briefer then provides the pilot with relevant notices to airmen, files his flight plan, and reminds him that pie reps are appreciated. The pilot says he'll try to provide them. The pilot makes his way to Reno Tahoe International Airport. He's running about a half hour behind his estimated departure time. The sun is set, 
and civil twilight is ending as November 286 Charlie Delta taxis into position for takeoff. At roughly the same time, about 25 miles to the southeast, Southwest Airlines Flight 2757 is descending through 17,000 feet. The Boeing 737 begins picking up moderate rime ice as it enters the cloud layer. The pilot passes this information along to Reno Approach and later reports exiting the clouds at 15,500. The PIREP is the first indication of unforecast icing in the Reno area that evening. Reno Southwest 2757 with a PIREP uh, picking up the moderate line entering the clouds about 17,000. Meanwhile, Cirrus 6 Charlie Delta is executing the Mustang 6 departure out of Reno. After initially flying southbound, he makes a 180 degree climbing left turn toward the Mustang VOR. He contacts Reno departure and is cleared to climb to his filed altitude. Uh, 5,500 climb 10,000. Three minutes later, ATC asked the pilot if he could accept a higher altitude to accommodate IFR traffic operating out of nearby Truckee Tahoe Airport. The Cirrus is equipped with a supplemental oxygen system, and the pilot accepts the new altitude. Yes. 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 The pilot is given a vector to intercept Victor 392. Okay, left to 270. Uh, Victor uh, 392. Resume on Delta. Seven minutes later, the Reno North controller hands Cirrus 6 Charlie Delta off to Oakland Center. The pilot checks in with Oakland. Oakland Center, Cirrus 286, Charlie Delta, 1,300, 500, 80 feet, climbing 14,000. Cirrus 6, Charlie Delta, Oakland uh, Center, roger. And uh, maintain 14,000. Fine, maintain 14,000, 6, Charlie Delta. Roughly two minutes pass. The pilot calls Oakland and asks for a higher altitude. The request is the first indication that the airplane might be picking up ice, although the pilot doesn't say anything about it to ATC. And uh, Cirrus 286 Charlie Delta, affirmative climb, maintain 16,000. About five minutes later, ATC clears the pilot direct to the Sacramento VOR which he acknowledges. Soon after, the pilot radios he's still in the clouds at 16,000 feet. He requests a descent. While waiting for his clearance to descend, the pilot changes his mind. If the airplane were to climb just a few hundred feet higher, he reasons, he'd be in the clear. At first, ATC is confused by the pilot's request, but the controller eventually grants him a block altitude. The pilot still says nothing about ICE. Okay, you want to go up or down? Uh, let me go up first, so I can build up the mass speed, if that's okay. Number 6 Charlie Delta, climb, uh, actually, uh, number 6 Charlie Delta, maintain the block, 16,000 through 17,000. Maintain the block, 16,000, 17,000, 6 Charlie Delta. The pilot begins to climb, but the ice-laden aircraft struggles to gain altitude. By the time the pilot reaches 16,700 feet, he realizes he's made a mistake. 
The icing has only become worse in the colder air above him. He's still in the clouds, and the cirrus, already nearing its surface ceiling, is close to stalling. As the pilot struggles to maintain control, the southwest-bound aircraft's heading begins drifting to the south, then the southeast. The pilot finally admits his problem to ATC, but his lack of urgency fails to catch the controller's attention. Uh, I'm coming down Charlie Delta. I guess I'm icing up. Fifteen seconds pass before ATC responds. By then, the situation is dire. Cirrus 6 Charlie Delta has entered a steep dive of 5,000 feet per minute, dropping off the radar at 15,700 feet. The pilot manages one last desperate transmission, followed by loud static. And number 6 Charlie Delta, uh, stay again. I'm icing up, I'm coming down. Okay, last uh, transmission was un uh, unreadable. Number 286, Charlie Delta, Oakland. November 286, Charlie Delta, Oakland. Number 286, Charlie Delta, Oakland. 